Amen. Well, good morning. If you're glad you're in church this morning, say amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to give you an announcement. I'm sure all of you already know what's happening, but every church in America ought to be shouting the roof off today because God overturned Roe versus Wade. Isn't that something to praise God for today? Do you understand this morning what that means for America? It means that God has not yet removed His hand of mercy. And that still means that God is still able to turn things around. Aren't you glad that God answers prayer? Amen, amen. Well, can we do one more thing? If you served at all any capacity in Bible school this week, will you stand up? If you served at all any capacity of Bible school, you stand up. Can we give these people a hand for their hard work this week? Amen. Y'all can be seated. It would just be worth it if one was saved, but there was two saved this week, so we're praising God for that today. Well, we're just going to worship this morning. Amen. If you're visiting today, you're welcome here. We're glad you're here. You make yourself at home. We're here for one reason, and that's to lift up the name of Jesus. I want to pray for us this morning, and then we're going to get started with our service. Would you pray with me? Lord, I thank you today, Lord, for the opportunity to be here. God, I thank you this morning, God, for the great, Lord, uh, thing, news that we've heard this week of Roe versus Wade being overturned. God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. God, we understand that that was no political person that did that, but that was the hand and the mercy of God that did that, and we thank you for that today. Lord, I pray this morning as we gather to worship, as we gather to preach your word, God, I pray that you'd minister to our hearts and do what only you can do in this place. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for allowing us to be here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Ron. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Brian Carlton. He'll come and light our candles. We do this every Sunday morning, remembrance of all of our service guys. Dawson, you come up and open us up in a word of prayer. Then after Brother Dawson gets through praying, choir, if you'll just come on up, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Let's pray. come to you this morning, Lord, to say thank you for allowing us to gather in your name, Lord, Lord, to be able to praise you this morning, Lord, and thank you for everything that you've done in our lives, Lord, we pray, and we just thank you for everything that you've done through the VBS, Lord, for those two saved, Lord, and we pray that you allow us to continue being a light to our community and to this nation, Lord, in your name, amen. Amen. Congregation, if you'll stand, choir, if you'll come on up, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Now, Matthew said Bible school was fun, but I tell you, Friday night did not turn out like old Roger wanted it to. I'll give you one recommendation. Don't take a bath in sour cream. It sure don't taste good. Makes your clothes feel, smell kind of funny too, right? But it was a good time in the Lord this past week. We enjoyed that very much. Thank you, guys. Follow along on the screen. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Here we go.
Matthew said we had a lot to be thankful for this morning. The next, next song is all about praising his name this morning. Amen.
Brother Tommy and Brother Rocky are going to continue to play. You step out and shake someone's hand this morning. Make them feel welcome. Would you do that? Happy birthday, Miss Olivia. Trust and pray you got around shaking someone's hand. We're going to dismiss Jesus' kids out the back door. Brother Charlie standing back there. Miss Leslie's over there. We'll let you go ahead and get on out the back door. Amen. Amen. Before our pastor comes uh, this morning to uh, bring the word, I want to sing a song and it's been on my heart uh, give you a little background I'm gonna if I can get through this if I get emotional just overlook it a uh, lot to think the Lord about I'm gonna read you a verse of scripture book of James chapter 1 verse number 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom no variableness, neither shadow turneth. We've been praying for a young lady. Her name's Lexi. She's been on the ECMO machine at Vanderbilt and they transferred her to the University of Alabama. She's been on the ECMO machine 280 plus days. Last night, God supplied her with a new set of lungs.
they're in the process of right now decannulating her, taking her off the ECMO sheets. It's a great blessing. This little song, it's a very simple song. Me and Brother Rick the other night had a conversation. We want to finish that one day, Brother. About the goodness of God. About the peace that only God can give. The peace that the world sometimes just don't understand. Don't listen to how I sing it. You'll, you'll learn to appreciate Brother Rocky and Brother Tommy when you hear me sing this morning. Um, simple little song. Just listen to the words. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Take your Bibles with me this morning to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, this is on my heart before I start preaching. Does anybody else have a song you feel like you're supposed to sing this morning? Anybody got anything on your heart? All right, 1 Timothy chapter number 3. When you get there, find your place, stand to your feet if you're able this morning honor and reverence of God's Word. Let me say there's no better place to be all week than church. I know we're tired. I know we're worn out from Bible school. I know many stayed almost till 10 o'clock Friday night tearing stuff down, but thank you for being in your place this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 3, if you're there, say amen. One verse of Scripture this morning, verse number 16. I desire your prayers today. The Bible said, And without controversy... Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be in this place today. God, there's no place that I'd rather be, Lord, than in your house on this morning to worship you. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done in my life. God, I thank you this morning that we have the privilege to sit in church and, Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, a bunch of nobodies that were on their way to hell, but I'm thankful this morning for a God that was big enough with enough mercy and enough love to die for us, Lord, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. 
Father, I know today that I have no ability, Lord, to preach unless you help me this morning. God, I did not volunteer for what I'm doing, but God, as a 17-year-old boy, you called me to do it. And Lord, I ask you this morning to sit me to the side, Lord, and to preach to every person, Lord, that's here this morning. And God, if there be a lost one under the sound of my voice, I pray today that they would get under the sound of the gospel, Lord, that today would be the day that their eternity would change. God, that you would reveal to them that they are lost and on their way to hell. But God, I pray it also reveal to them, Lord, that you are mighty to save. And God, that there's no sinner too bad that you can't forgive and can't save this morning. God, I pray that you'd bind the enemy in Jesus' name from this place. And Lord, I pray for that person who's walking at a guilty distance this morning. God, that they would be drawn back to you, Lord, or for that person that's just struggling with life. God, I pray you'd help them as only you can. And Lord, we'll give you all the honor and glory for what you do. Lord, hide me behind your cross this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I desire your prayers today. I, I believe there's more that God wants to do to close this week out. And it just seems like this morning that the enemy's used every dart that he has in his arsenal. But I, I need you to pray that I can preach this morning. But uh, God laid this on my heart very early in the week. And my quiet time, I've been reading through 1 Timothy. And I've been praying about some things, reading about the roles of uh, church leaders. In, and God's been showing me some things. But Brother Rocky, what we come to in this verse, many scholars believe uh, that it was an old Christian hymn. And when you read uh, the part of it, you, you can see it. I'm going to read it again. The latter part said that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Now, none of us should really know if that was part of an old church hymn or not, but uh, scholars and theologians believe it was. And just reading it, Brother Roger, it seems like maybe that's something that they'd sing in the synagogue when Paul would go uh, uh, to preach the gospel. But I believe there's a lot of doctrine and theology in this verse that we can learn, and the Lord has led me this morning to break it down to you. Can I do it piece by piece for you this morning? The first thing that Paul said was God was manifest in the flesh. Now what I see wrapped up in this verse is the gospel in a whole. Brother Don, what I see in this verse is the good news that Jesus came to die for a bunch of nobodies. He got up out of the grave. He was received up into glory and one day he's coming back again. Paul started where it all began when he said that God was manifest in the flesh. Don't turn there but you can mark it. Matthew chapter 1 verse number 21 says and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 23 said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. You know where Paul started this morning? He started all the way back where it's, can you imagine over 400 years of silence? There's not been a prophet from God. There has not been a word from God in over 400 years. Uh, and then an angel appears to a woman named Mary. She didn't have much money and she's engaged to a man named Joseph and he didn't have much money. They were the lowest of the lows. The Bible even said, uh, if you read on there, that Jesus was not born in the synagogue. He was not born in the temple, but he was born in a manger and a little stable in a town called Bethlehem the lowest place that he could be born because he was coming to die for the lowest of people Paul started where it all started John said it like this in John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in verse 14 he said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. I am glad today uh, that Jesus was manifest in the flesh. Uh, do you understand what that means for you and I? That the Bible said in Romans 6, 23 that the wages of sin is death. Somebody has to die for what you and I have done wrong. Uh, and Jesus was sitting on the right hand side of the Father, but Peter said before the foundation of the world uh, that it was already determined that Jesus would be the only one uh, that 
could die for the sins of the people. Uh, he would be the one that would come uh, and be born in a manger. He was the Word of God, uh, and He became in the flesh for us. Uh, he lived a perfect, sinless life. Uh, he never did anything wrong. Uh, and I think it does good this morning for those of us that are saved uh, uh, to remember that Jesus didn't just snap His fingers and it was done, uh, but they took Him out in the courtyard that day, uh, and they whipped Him in the back, and they beat Him, and they mocked Him, and they made fun of Him, and then they nailed Him to a cross uh, for one reason, not to get more followers, uh, not to become more popular, but to save sinners. Uh, you know what I was reminded this week? Uh, that song that the McCamish sing, uh, I am so glad that God saves uh, old sinners. The only way that that could happen this morning is if He was manifest in the flesh. You know what Paul said every time that he went into those synagogues? Every time that he went into the temple, Paul didn't say, I got ten steps for you to live a better life. But he went and said that Jesus died, he was buried, and that he rose again the best. I I'm telling you, the other day, Brother Ralph sent out a message on Messenger, and he said the Supreme Court's overturned Roe versus Wade. And Brother Ralph, I believed you, but I Googled it because I wanted to watch the report myself. I wanted to watch those reporters who had been standing against that have to confess that there is a God in heaven that can do the impossible. And I, I'm telling you, I was in the house by myself, and Brother Roger, I just started shouting all over the house. Uh, we'd been praying for that, and that makes me glad this morning. It makes me excited. But I'm even more excited that Jesus died for a nobody like me, uh, and that on September 9, 2011, while I was living in the midst of my sin, uh, while I wasn't looking for God, uh, while I was further away than I could be, uh, that sitting in the back pew of a church uh, uh, there came the Holy Spirit of God uh, and said Matthew I came to save sinners like you that day my life changed forever because Jesus was manifest in the flesh the second thing Paul said that he was justified in the spirit Brother Ralph had no idea in Sunday school that I was going to preach on this when he was teaching. You know what the Bible said over there in Matthew chapter number 3? He was justified in the Spirit. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible said, And Jesus, when he was baptized, uh, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, uh, and whom whom I am well pleased. Uh, you know what it means that Jesus was justified in the Spirit? Uh, it means that He was not alone when He was walking the earth. Uh, uh, you see, we believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, uh, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, and you know what happened there that day when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist? Uh, uh, the heavens opened up, the Spirit came down like a dove, uh, and it fell upon Jesus, and the Father said, Behold, this is my Son, uh, in whom I am well pleased. You know what it means that he was justified in the spirit uh, that he had the stamp of approval of God for everything that he did uh, uh, the very fact that he could raise the dead uh, when Lazarus was in the tomb that day uh, uh, the very fact that blind Bartimaeus got his sight back uh, uh, the very fact that Jairus' daughter was healed uh, uh, the very fact that the man laying by the pool of Bethesda got up and walked that day uh, was for one reason because Jesus was justified uh, in the spirit Romans chapter 1 verse 4 said, And he declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Uh, you know what? I'm glad this morning that Jesus died for me. Are you glad that Jesus died for you this morning? There ain't nothing special about me today. I won't make it to heaven because I pastor this church. Uh, I won't make it to heaven, Brother Roger, because I've been in the baptismal waters. Uh, I won't make it to heaven because I dropped my tithe in the box in the back on my way in. Uh, but I'll make it to heaven because he that knew no sin became sin for us uh, that we might be made into the righteousness of God in him uh, I'll make it to heaven one day brother Jeff uh, because God commended his love toward us uh, and while we were yet sinners uh, that Christ died for us uh, I'll make it to heaven one day because by the obedience of one uh, uh, shall many be made righteous I'm glad that Jesus died for my I hate that he had to suffer. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm glad because had there not been the shedding of blood, the book of Hebrews said there'd be no remission of sins. 
But you know what I'm even more thankful for? Romans chapter 8 verse 11 said, But if the Spirit of Him, listen, that raised up Jesus from the dead... You know what it means to be justified in the Spirit? That Jesus lived in the Spirit and one day Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus placed him in a borrowed tomb and the Spirit of God raised him up. I started to think about our last night. It was about Jesus escaping out of the tomb. And I was trying not to, try not to haul off and preach Friday night during the family night. It makes me so excited that, that Mary and Martha and them women's on the way to the tomb that day. Uh, and Mary Magdalene's pondering in her mind. Uh, uh, Brother Rick, she had seven devils that Jesus had cast out of her earlier. And now she's got word that her master is dead. Uh, the Bible said that all of them forgot that Jesus said, In three days I will rise again uh, and I'll go before you into Galilee. Uh, can, you, can, you all, can you go up there in your mind with me this morning? That Mary's walking to the tomb and she's hanging her head low. Uh, and the Bible said she got over there uh, and she looked at a man, thought he was the gardener, and said, Sir, uh, uh, just tell me what you've done with his body uh, and I'll go get it and I'll prepare it and give it a proper burial. Uh, and he said, Mary. And she turned around and realized that the one that cast the devils out of her uh, was no longer in the ground. Uh, uh, some of y'all wonder this morning why I get so excited about it uh, because Buddha may be in the dead, in the grave. My Muhammad's still dead. Uh, uh, Confucius didn't have it figured out. Uh, but if you go over to where old Joseph left him, I feel like preaching this morning. Uh, he ain't there for he is risen. That's why we ought to rejoice today. But watch this. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. <laughs> Well, it, do, you, do you realize what that means? That the very thing that told Jesus, that the very person that raised Jesus from the dead, if you've been born again, raise your hand, lives inside of me and you. You, you know what I started to think about this morning? It seemed like from the time before I got out of bed that the enemy's already working. And I got to remembering that there ain't no demon in hell that's stronger than Jesus. I got to remember, and I just got to remind the devil right now, uh, uh, that a third of the angels fell from heaven with him. Uh, uh, that means that God has two angels for every one demon that Satan's got walking around this morning. And I'm glad this morning, Brother Don, uh, that on that green carpet on the left-hand side of that altar, uh, roughly about 12.30 that Sunday morning, that hell moved out of my soul and heaven moved in uh, and the very power that got Jesus out of the grave lives inside of me and you but look what he said if it dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You know what that means? Jesus was manifest in the flesh. Jesus was justified in the spirit. But there's a word that we use and it's called justification. And if you and I have been born again, we have been justified. Brother Ralph got the teaching this morning. I wasn't going to tell him. I just let him preach. Maybe he'd say something I could use this morning in Sunday school. And he's talking about being justified in the spirit. Jesus got it in full measure, but you and I got it in full measure. Did you know this morning you can have as much of Jesus as you want of him? But you got to let him come in. Preacher, why you got so much joy? Nobody else does because I opened the door and said, Lord, fill my cup. He was manifest in the flesh. He's justified in the spirit. Are you all, all right? Say amen. All right, look back there. Second First Timothy 3.16. It said that he was seen of angels. Now we can look at this two ways. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Jesus just walks out of the wilderness. He's been tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. He's had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And the Bible said that angels came and they ministered unto him. But the Bible here, the, he, the Greek word for angel is the same Greek word for angel in the book of Revelations when the, church, when the letters are written to the seven churches. And you remember that John would write and say, unto the angel of Ephesus, that meant the pastor. That, that word angel in the Greek means a messenger. So maybe Jesus is talking, Paul is talking about, when he says that Jesus was seen of angels. Can I tell you what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians in chapter 15, in verse number 3, Paul said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins uh, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again the third day uh, according to the Scriptures. Listen to what he said. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of above five hundred 
brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are falling asleep uh, I'll say it both ways Jesus was seen of angels uh, uh, the Bible says right now in heaven that the angels are surrounding the throne of God uh, while all of God's children are crying out holy 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 uh, is the Lord God Almighty uh, uh, the angel came and ministered unto Jesus after the temptation uh, uh, do you remember that but most of all he was seen of above 500 messengers brother Curtis still some people say that he didn't rise again he was seen of angels let's see what Paul said next I like this one he said he was preached unto the Gentiles you know what that means that's what I'm doing right now he's still being preached unto the Gentiles the Bible said in Acts chapter 28 verse 28 Paul said be it known therefore unto you that salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles uh, that they will hear it uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse number 23 uh, uh, Paul said if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard listen and which was preached unto every creature which is under heaven wherefore I am Paul and made a minister uh, uh, the Bible says said that Jesus was preached unto the Gentiles. Now if you read the Old Testament uh, and you read the beginning of the New Testament and you read Paul's letter to Galatia, the Galatians you begin to understand that the, uh, they were the uncircumcised people group. Uh, uh, the Gentiles were unclean. Uh, in that time in Bible times there was a separate place in the temple where the Gentiles could go uh, but they couldn't get into the most sacred place of the temple because they were not circumcised uh, and they were unclean you know what the Bible says there uh, uh, that Jesus was not preached to those only that have it all together but brother Jack he was preached to the nobodies and the nothings uh, aren't you glad today that Jesus said uh, I came not to call the righteous uh, but sinners to repentance uh, if Jesus only came for those who were good uh, brother Jamie I never would have had a chance uh, but thank God he looks for those that are in the gutters uh, and he looks for those that are trapped in sin uh, he looks for those that got nobody else to help him uh, on that day brother Don nobody else could help me uh, but in walked a man a lot bigger than me uh, and he said look at the nail pierced hands uh, he said go ahead and feel my side uh, and that day that preacher got behind the pulpit uh, and he's in heaven now but I'll be forever grateful that he did not back down uh, but he preached what thus saith the Lord uh, you know why I preach what thus saith the Lord uh, because what thus saith Matthew doesn't matter uh, but God's word is in fact it's inspired and it's an errand and if we would trust in it everything would change he's preached unto the Gentiles aren't you glad he was preached unto you we just got done studying on Wednesday nights about the book of Acts and I I hope you learned something from it but that was Paul preaching unto the Gentiles you remember Peter said I'll preach unto the Jews you preach unto the Gentiles and from Paul traveling from place to place here we sit today in the United States of America where in churches all over the place he's still being preached unto the Gentiles can we look at the next thing he said he was manifest in the flesh he's justified in the spirit he's seen of angels he's preached unto the Gentiles I like this one he was believed on in the world I could preach for about 10 days straight right here the Bible said in John chapter number 3 verse 14 as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life here's a verse that all of us know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life uh, listen for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God have you believed on him today I begin to think about a lot of different places brother Roger that I could go right here what about that lady with the blood issue 
she, she's walking one day and she tried to see every doctor she could see, spent all the money she had. And after 12 years, Brother Rocky, she seen Jesus in the midst of the crowd. Uh, the Bible said there's a multitude thronging around him. Uh, and she got on her hands and her knees uh, and she crawled to the altar. Uh, and she, she crawled to Jesus and just touched the hem of his garment. Uh, and immediately the Bible said that she was made whole. Uh, what about Jairus? About the same time, uh, he came and said, Master, my daughter lieth at the point of death. Uh, I need you to help her. Uh, what do you think Jairus was thinking in that moment uh, when Jesus was helping somebody else and he needed him to help him? Uh, oh, but you know what Jesus said? The servants came uh, and they said, Master, your daughter is already dead. Don't trouble Jesus anymore. Uh, and Jesus said, Be not afraid. Only believe. He was believed on in the world. Uh, uh, Jesus walked to Jairus' house, went in that room, uh, and told that little girl to get up. Uh, what about that man laying by the pool of Bethesda? On that day, he had nobody else to help him. And Jesus came and said, Sir, would you be made whole? Uh, and he said, I would, but I've got nobody to get me to the water when it's troubled. Uh, and Jesus said, You don't have to. You know why? Because he was talking to the living water. And Jesus said, Take up your bed and walk. Uh, what about, are y'all with me this morning? I'm going to keep going. What about that group of friends uh, uh, that try to get their friend to Jesus uh, uh, that was paralyzed uh, and they couldn't get him through the crowd so they climbed the house. Uh, uh, they tore off the clay roof and lowered him through the roof. Uh, what about that centurion uh, uh, that said, Jesus, I am in charge of things just like you are. Uh, I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. Uh, uh, just say the word and my servant will be healed. Uh, and Jesus said, I found not so great a faith in all of Israel. Uh, our Bible is full of people who believed God. Uh, what about some lowly fishermen uh, uh, that didn't have anything in life? Uh, but the moment Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side, uh, uh, they started to believe in him. Uh, what about a church this morning full of people? Does anybody believe God for anything this morning? Uh, uh, you know what Paul said? Uh, he looked at them that day in the book of Acts, and he said, be of good cheer, sir, uh, for I believe God. You know what God showed me this week about the school? People still believe it on him. You know why? Because what preceded, he's still being preached unto the Gentiles. Do you believe on him this morning? The best thing you could ever do in your life is not make some kind of great achievement in your job. It's not buy a fancy house or a brand new vehicle. But the best thing you can ever do is come to Jesus and say, Lord, I believe you know, some of us have trouble doing that sometimes. If I'm being honest, there's some situations in my life, Brother John, where I've had a hard time just to believe that God was able. Can I, can I say like this? I knew that God was able, Brother Curtis, to turn around Roe versus Wade. But when I got that message the other morning, I was surprised. I was rejoicing because I felt like I was that man that had the demon-possessed boy. He was throwing himself in the fire. The disciples done tried to cast out, cast him out, and they couldn't. And he came to Jesus and said, Master, you're the only hope I've got left. You know what he said? Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. The boy was healed just like that. I could go on and on. What about the lepers? What about the man of Gadara? What about all these people that needed God to do something? You remember blind Bartimaeus? Jesus just came walking by. He couldn't even see him, but he could feel him. And he cried out and said, Master, I need you to give me my sight back. And Jesus said, Believest thou that I'm able to do this? And he said, I do. And immediately he got his sight back. Can I say it like this this morning? If we would just believe again, God would do exceedingly, abundantly more than we could think or ask. Let me finish this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 3. He's believed on in the world. He was received up into glory y'all know where I'm going one of my favorite scriptures Acts chapter number 1 verse number 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go away. And the church said, Amen. Jesus, all things were accomplished. He got up from the grave. Uh, Forty days later, he's standing just right outside the city, and he told the disciples, 
disciples in Matthew chapter 28 uh, uh, that to wait in Jerusalem till the power from on high would fall upon them and then to go into all the world preaching that Jesus uh, has come and died and rose again to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Uh, and as the disciples were standing there looking all 11 of them at that point, uh, uh, Jesus was taken up into heaven. Can you imagine what it was like them standing as he was received up into glory? Brother Tommy, Brother Rocky, will you help me please? Jesus was manifest in the flesh. He's justified in the spirit. He's seen of angels. He's preached unto the Gentiles. He's believed on in the world. But he's received up into glory. If that really was an old Christian hymn, can I add a stanza to it? He's received up into glory, but he's coming back again. <laughs> I'm going to run a lap. Can you imagine they're standing there looking? And the angel said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus that went away will come again in like manner. Jesus said in John chapter number 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 uh, uh, said that with the shout and the voice of the archangel uh, uh, that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm not looking for the undertaker this morning. I'm looking for the upper taker. It may seem dark in this world but Jesus is coming again and he will right every wrong. He'll fix every mistake and I feel like running. One day he's coming and he's going to take us home. But are you ready? Do you know we sung some songs this morning. Some of us could feel some stuff stirring. Some of us couldn't. Jesus has been preached unto you if no other time he has been this morning. Everything I preached to you came straight from my Bible. Do you know that if you died right now in this moment that heaven would be your home? most important thing you can ever do is believe on Jesus. Because, dear friend, the Bible said that as the thief in the night, Jesus will come again. Before you can blink your eyes, he could have us out of here. And I began to think about just what it's going to be like one day when we get to heaven. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. But do you know that you're going? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody moving around. Nobody leaving if you can help it. Christians pray, and I don't believe God's done saving this week. Would you say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Would you just show me your hand? I know that Jesus lives in my heart. Thank you for that. I see your hand. Nobody's looking but me. But this morning, you don't know that you're saved. Preacher, I don't have that peace. Preacher, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. Today you can if you just believe. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand today. God knows who you are. But just in a moment as I give this invitation, I'd ask you to stand up from where you are to come get around an old-fashioned altar. I'll take my Bible and show you how Jesus can save you today. Dear Christian, are you living a life ready for Jesus to come again? Are you living a life ready that if he came right now, you'd say, Lord, I was just looking for you. Or would you say, Lord, I need a few minutes to get some things right. Dear friend, today is your chance to get things right. Whatever your need is, there's a God who waits here that can meet your need. Lord, I thank you for this time to be in your house. Jesus, thank you for the great mercy and grace that you've had in dying for sinners such as I. And Father, I don't believe that you're done saving lost sinners this week. Lord, I pray if there's somebody in this place that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. God, I pray that this morning would be the time that they would believe on you. 
that they would be ready, Lord, come what may. Father, I pray for that person who may be walking at a guilty distance. Lord, that this morning you would draw them back to yourself. Father, I pray for that person who's just discouraged and heartbroken. God, I pray that they'd find rest in the everlasting arms this morning. Lord, whatever our need is, I pray that the Spirit of God would draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. As we stand this morning as Roger sings, if you need to come, I'm going to invite you to come. Would you come? Don't wait. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my heart. Just as we all bow our heads as Brother Tommy continues to play this morning. Just before we go home, I I, I feel in my spirit that God's still speaking to somebody. I don't know what your need might be. I don't know what you're facing in this very moment this morning. But there is a God in heaven that's big enough to fix whatever the problem is. Would you just give it to him? Just give that problem to him this morning. I feel on my heart, we're going to sing one more verse. If you need to come, I'm going to invite you to come. I feel on my heart this morning to open the doors of the church. If you're not a member of our church and God has sent you this way, you feel like you're supposed to join this body of believers, I'd invite you to come to the altar during this invitation. Whatever the need might be, Brother Roger, if you've got one more verse, let's sing one more verse. Let God have his way. Trust in only in the very Amen. Amen. Would Amen. I see thy face Amen. Y'all just stand right here. Anybody else?
Well, I think this is something all of us have been hoping and praying amen, for. Amen, amen. Brother Tommy and Miss Sue, right, has come to join the church today. Will you be coming by letter from Bethel Baptist? What is the motion of the church? If you agree, say aye. Any opposed sign? Amen. Amen. Well, we got the two-for-one deal. We got Brother Rocky and Brother Tommy. Can we praise the Lord for that's wonderful this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, I've got a few announcements, one more thing to do, and then we'll have you all stand up here, and can we give you the right hand of fellowship? Okay, amen. If you all just want to take a seat on that front pew, we'll do that then. You can be seated just for a minute. I've got to give you some announcements, and then we've got to do one more thing this morning. And then we'll give them the right hand of fellowship, and we'll go find something to eat. Somebody say amen. Today is the Blessing Box Giving Day. If you brought donations this morning, there's some crates in the vestibule of the Education Building. You can just drop those straight in. Uh, or if you brought donations, you can use the folders on the back table. Uh, just write Blessing Box or memo your check to that. We'll make sure it goes to that. All right. We will have a shelf ready next week for that. Brother Daniel's building us one. Um, if you've ordered a youth t-shirt, your money is due today. So see Kayla or Jamie if you want to get one. Church council meeting today at 5. Um, and then Faith, Family, and Fireworks is this Saturday. Real busy week right on the tail end of Bible school. So we need all the help that we can get. Um, I, I need some men. If you're able tomorrow night, let's just say 6, 630. If I've got some men that are able to bring some weed eaters, I need some help weed eating in the back so we can clear a spot to shoot our fireworks off. So if you can come help me with that, that'll be good. Anything you, else you need for it? Charlie? Amen. 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 I'll, uh, I'll have you some invitations in here. We have some left over tonight, so you can invite people to come to that. Invite your friends. And then the fair will start the 18th. We'll have two booths set up right on the tail end of that. So we're in the busy season. Uh, there's some sign-up sheets. Judy, are they next door? Um, you can sign up to work in those booths um, to help us with that. Okay? Tonight I will have our offering total for you. You see the, the, the backpacks over here. Our mission project this year was for the Isaiah House, uh, which is to help foster children in their transition. And the boys versus girls this year, as we always do in our change, um, we, uh, the boys won, so that, that was a praise. Um, I didn't think I was going to get pied, but we still got pied. Y'all can see that video tonight during service. We'll show you, but we, we, we raised over, I believe it was $1,600 for the Isaiah house. Little kids bringing money. Amen. So I, how I want to do this, Brother Curtis, will you come up here, please stand with me? We want to pray over these backpacks before we take them to the Isaiah house. They're going to be used um, for little kids in the transition. we got boxes of clothes. Melanie, anything you want to say about that? All right. Amen. How many backpacks are here? Do you know? Around 70. And these are going to help little kids that are just in the midst of heartbreak. So would you stand with us? We'll do this, and then we'll come around for the right hand of fellowship. Uh, Brother Curtis, I just want you to pray over these backpacks for us. So everybody just stretch your right hand forward toward these backpacks. And Brother Curtis, you lead us in prayer over them, okay? Just thank you for this day. We also thank you for uh, the men and women that are working in Isaiah House. And, and we just want to pray over these backpacks that are going to these, these children that are coming from uh, broken homes. We know that, that, uh, that they have... A tough beginnings, Lord, and we just pray that these that these backpacks are a blessing on them, and that they know that there are people that are there that that are praying for them, and that you are there for them, and that you are in their hands, and that and that you have a plan truly for them, Lord, to to go forward with their lives, and that things will always will always be bleak, that there is hope, and um, and just again ask that you support this Isaiah House and, and their mission that's out there, Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Curtis. Well, Brother Rocky, can you come hop on this piano, please, since Brother Tommy's going to be standing up here? Amen. Amen. Did I hear somebody say my name? Yeah, everybody make sure you tell Olivia happy birthday, 18th birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Brother Tommy, Miss Sue, you come stand with me, please. Brother Rocky, you hit a tune. 
On your way out, you come give them the right hand of fellowship and you'll be at liberty to go today, okay?